All right. Get my light a little bit better here. Is that better? All right. Time to finish Gadamets tonight. Going to do it. Part 10. Oh, where's my metronome? Hang on. Where is it? Where's my other? There it is. All right. It's been five, the 10th and final installment. So it's been five weeks, hard to believe. But I'm going to get through the last bit of Gadamets. Starting with page 37. <laughs> this is where I'm starting. Flotty Fla Flas alternated displaced. I messed around with this a little bit this morning. So on Tuesday, I was saying I was a little bit concerned about some of these being complex, but I quickly discovered there's a pattern to all of these, so they're a lot of fun. I think the warm down is actually going to be the hardest part to get through tonight, but I'm going to start with page 37. Again, if you don't know by now, got a minute to get yourself a copy uh, over at Hudson Music. So flatty fla flaws alternated displaced. What does that mean? Flatty fla flaws again is Steve's way of name for uh, powder fla flaws. I should probably angle my camera down a smidge. All right, that's powder fla fla. But that's not what he's doing. These are flammed mills with an extra flam at the end. So a normal flammed mill is right flam, right, left, right, left flam, left, right, left. But he's putting an extra flam on the fourth note. So it's like a combination of a flammed mill and a powder fla fla put together. There's a flam, right, left, and then another right flam. So right flam, right, left, right, and then it eventually goes the other way too. Left flam, left, right, another left flam. So that's the rudiment. I'll back up a bit here so you can see this revolution chopping block pad I've been using this whole time. Zone. These aren't flotty flop flaws, I don't think. They're flammed mills and pot of flop flaws combined. These feel really interesting. So the exercise is number one is that rudiment followed by alternating flams and then the rudiment again and then a single flam so one e and a two and three e and a four and then some with the left hand this sticking flows really nicely example so then what is he doing he, he goes through the same displacement series that he's kind of done throughout the whole book so it goes from on the on the downbeat on the e the and and the the uh and then it flips hands let's try it this is number two on page 37 Go measure by measure. So it's as on the downbeat. 
and then he adds another 16th to get to the E, one E and a two E and a, and, and, to the and, to get to the uh, you gotta, uh, you can only play two of the, That gets us the uh. We'll do that far. The first four bars of measure of example two. One e and a two e and a. Hmm. I had it better earlier. Hmm. Thought thought I had it. No, it's the same thing that happened last time. The more I think about it, the harder it gets because the pattern, my hands know how to play the pattern. I just have to trust them. And just keep track of the quarter note. There's a left. Yeah, so if I don't think about it and I just let the pattern flow, I can get through it. Since I start thinking about like, oh, I gotta add an extra note and put it on the E, overthinking it kind of takes the uh, muscle memory out of it. It's kind of the opposite of the way I think about everything else. And interesting. So I guess the, the lesson here is to learn the pattern, as I'm talking to myself here, learn the pattern, get it into my muscle memory and then trust that my hands are going to keep that pattern even when I displace it. It's a lot of trust in your hands. Three and four and... It's that last, that last displacement. I got to remember to start earlier. Mm, two, three, and Did it again. Yeah, so note to myself, anyone watching, spend some time memorizing that number one. Get that. That core sticking pattern memorized. Because then the displacements will flow a lot more naturally. Let's try it again. Two, number two, and that's it. Not super, super clean, but pretty, pretty good. It feels pretty good. I want to move on. These next ones were originally intimidating until I saw it's just a pattern. So how these are all working, if there's a 16th note that follows the flam, it's going to be with the same hand that played the flam. So it's going to be a flam tap or like a Swiss triplet. So it's going to be that same idea if you play a right flam the following 16th is going to be with the same hand left flam following 16th is going to be with the left hand once i figured out that i could just read the accents and follow that rule and it flows i don't have to think about flam it's a flam tap it's a flam tap it's alternating flams i just know if anything that follows an accent is going to be with the same hand
What's up, Spencer? Good to see you. So, 77. That's number one on page 38. Number two, same concept. Just read the accents and then use the the rule that any 16th following an accent, following a flam, has to be with the same hand. And three and four and. Just made it, as soon as I figured that out, this whole page became a lot easier to get through. Um, but you could do the same thing with syncopation. So if you think, if you had know the book Syncopation, the classic uh, pages everyone learns, the first example is one and and three, four, and three, four. So you could do that same concept. use flam sparingly. I've learned recording so much. Um, flams don't translate as, as, as well as you might think <laughs> they do on drum set, uh, especially on recordings. Like a big flam on the snare sometimes is just incredibly distracting. So I've learned to kind of whittle them out of my playing since I've done primarily recording these days. Of course you can't beat a big flam to get a song going or something, but yeah, these are just, I think of these as more just dexterity patterns. To get this kind of feel. I absolutely play this motion all the time. On that sucker. So what was I saying? Oh, you can uh, you can apply this this flam chowder with extra flams concept to Ted Reed syncopation. One and and three four. So one and and three four. through all the, the classic syncopation exercises. Doesn't quite work when there's more than two notes in between. But the first chord, you can figure it out. But anyway, back to this. Page 38, number three. Seven. Number four. These, I like these. I like these patterns. It's fun to just improvise some phrases. That's page 38.
like I said, I'm going to try to finish this book. I think I'm going to hit a roadblock when I get to the warm downs, but page 39 is Flamelittles. It's actually a two page exercise. Here's number one, number two, number three, DS no repeats. It's weird. I don't know why he wrote this like one long piece. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it exercise at a time. He's saying do number one twice, number two twice, number three twice. Go back to the beginning and just read it straight down top to bottom. I ain't trying to do that. I'm going to do it page by page. Number one. So this one has no flams. It's all just based on two accents with a single hand, which is the whole technical challenge in itself because you have to do a full stroke followed by a down stroke. What's the tempo here? 82. Try not to overthink the technique of these anymore. now let my hand apply everything that has been learning for 38 pages to just flow and see if I can get the phrasing. tough to get those. Let's see if I can relax a little bit more. One and two and three and four and... Yeah, a little bit of tendency to when there's all those four, the the fourth bar, second and fourth bar, tendency to stop that second note, even though I've got to play an accent after that. So that's a tendency. I have to let it come all the way up to prepare for that e and one e and a two e and so it's up and then play it down. That's all the more overthinking I'm going to do for that. I don't know how this relates to the rest of this flam a littles chapter. Because number two, he goes right back to these flammed mills. I don't see how that relates. I mean, the sticking, I guess, is the same. But the accent patterns aren't. Weird. Weird one, Steve. Haven't figured it out yet, but here's number two on page 39. Three and four and... So the basic, the, the primary sticking is the same as example one, just the accents are, are not. There's no double accents in a row in that one. Number three is a four bar phrase. off guard. 
But again, it's just a series of those, the same concept. If you play a flame followed by a 16th, it's going to be with the same hand. And then if there's more than one, it'll be with the other hand. So if there's three 16ths, it'll be flam, same hand, other hand. If there's two, it'll be flam, same hand. And then it'll be alternating flams. That's kind of it. That's the rule. Then you just got to read the accent. Cool little phrase. Let's try it at 82. Two e and a four e and a. I'm still trying to figure out what the relationship is between this and number one. There isn't one. Anyway, number three. There's again that fourth bar. I want to play a flaw flaw there. Right. Again from the beginning. One and two and three and four. Pretty cool piece. I like that one. It's very similar to that Jeff Tain Watts sticking that I learned back in grad school, but I can't remember what it was. find it. I have a notebook of all these things I transcribed somewhere in a file cabinet over there. That was one of them. Anyway, that's not what this is. Pretty fun. That's a fun little thing. That's page 40. All right, here we are. Warm downs. The final three pages of Gadamets coming to the end of this 10 part series of you watching me learn and stumble and discover stuff through Gadamets. So, back to the this is back to what we're doing on the very first page where we've got combinations of doubles singles, paradiddles. So, three times. And then an ending. Ah, that's what he does different. Puts like an extra accent in there. Tempo, 84. Opposite hand. All right, that's number one. Number two, it all starts on the uh. It's gonna be weird. Two and three and four.
There's a left. Not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Still a little weird, but a little bit like I'm on a tightrope walk, but two and three and four. Adding too many. That's what screwed me up. Three and four. That's it. That's the uh. Moving right along, y'all. This might be a short stream. If I can get through these last two pages, it might be famous last words. Now it's the E. Hmm. And then the E of three. Is, is kind of strange. Let's just try it. Tempo. Hmm. I feel like I'm losing integrity on the beat three. There's two 30 second notes on beat three that ends each phrase. I feel like that's where I'm kind of losing integrity. Three and four and. weird. Alright, page 43. This is the last page of this freaking book. can't believe it. Last page of Gadamus, then I can burn my book. <laughs> Have a book burning. So what happens now? Just combining them all. All right, it's the big wrap up here. Number four, page forty-three, and two, and three, and four, and. Look at that. 
Funny. Practice pays off, huh? 43 pages to get through, and now I feel like it's all starting to make sense. I want to do that one again, just make sure it wasn't a fluke. One and two and three and four and... Sweet. Right on. Well, it's a handful of you logged in, so if you have anything you wanted to chat about before I uh, stick a fork in this bad boy and end this Gadamit series for once and for all, now's the time. That's it. That was page 43. There is no more music in this book. There's some cool pictures of Steve when he was a kid rubbing it in. 1959, he was, 1951, he was, I guess his first snare drum, looks like a single tension, 1957, he's marching snare, 1959, he's marching a tenor drum, it looks like, 1954, he's like a featured drum set player with a stage band, with his crazy marching band outfit on, 1957, Steve Gadd is it looks like he's playing a drum duet with Gene Krupa. What? That's nuts. Oop, there's more. Aha. Nope, there's not more. That's it. There's like, hmm. I don't know if any of you have a copy of this. Ah, Paul Kennedy. Is there any way you could tackle Carter's book next? You know what? I should. I mean, I transcribed all the stuff in that book. <laughs> I should learn how to play it. Yes, let's do Carter's book next. I'm probably going to change the time of day that I stream because I can't, I can't play the drum set full volume this time of night. Uh, so maybe I'll start doing like a lunchtime stream and we can get through... Drum set concepts and creativity by my good friend Carter McLean. I can play about a third of them, but some of them I could intellectualize, but my body couldn't do it. So, yes, we will do that. That'll be next. That'll be funny. I'll make sure he knows so he can come in on, and haggle me. Um, heckle me, not haggle. Heckle me. Um, I don't know, if you have a copy of Gadamets, I'm curious if everyone has like an extra form of pages got like after the warm downs on page 43 there's a thank you from Steve there's some pictures of him as a kid and playing drums with Gene Krupa and there's a page of notes and then it gives you the, the warm downs again page 42 43 with the thank yous it's like snuck in an extra um, that's it yeah I'll do Carter's book next yeah that might give me a Give me a week to kind of refresh myself on it. Um, some of that stuff, the fives and over the the polyrhythm feet, is insane. Uh, but yeah, I need to learn that one. So let's we'll see. In summary, what did I learn from going through Gadamitz two hours a week? for five weeks. Um, I'm learning to trust my hands again, to let them just play the pattern that they've learned how to play without overthinking it and kind of micromanaging every motion. I'm playing with a much looser grip like I used to back in like early college days. I originally learned the Gladstone Joe Morello style um, technique. George Lawrence Stone. I learned that back in high school and then kind of got away from it a bit when I was focusing on different types of articulation. So I feel like I'm learning to get back into that, loosen up my grip, trying to get a bigger sound, letting the natural rebound of doubles dictate stick heights.
Um, it's really affecting the way I play drums. I'm feeling like I'm, I'm able to just kind of relax a lot more. Uh, my hands just feel good now. Like I don't, I don't feel stiff at all, even in the first thing in the morning. So yeah, yeah, I think it's been 10 hours, you know, roughly 10 hours well spent to just kind of shed through this. I certainly didn't master it all. There was a couple of those pages last week that had me in fits. So I'll probably just pull it out once a week and randomly pick a page and, and go through it from here on out. But that's going to be it for streaming this book. I appreciate anyone who's logged in live or watched this thing archived, who's been dropping some stuff in the chat to keep uh, keep the flow going. Um, there's been a couple donations to the, to the stream, which I greatly appreciate. Um, I'm going to try to keep doing these more. This this room is getting redesigned at the end of the month, so it'll be a more proper looking. It won't be so, you know, closet <laughs> craziness with all that stuff. So I'm going to, some, the walls are going to be treated, hopefully get the cameras mounted properly in, in the walls and the ceiling. So I'll be able to stream from the throne instead of here at my podcast station. So it'll be the end of the month. So... Maybe we'll get, um, I'll try to get through Carter's book before that happens. I'll make that a goal to get through Carter McLean's drum set concept and creativity before the end of the month. Let's, let's see, is that going to happen? That's it. I'm going to hop off of here and have a good evening. It's turning into an icy mess outside here in Pittsburgh. So if you're anywhere in the um, path of the storm, stay safe. If you're somewhere warm, I'm jealous. Um, I'm going to log off. Have a good night, and I'll see you. Look for notifications on the next series, which will be Jump Set Concepts and Creativity. Most likely streaming noonish at some point in the week. Maybe, maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon. But be on the lookout for that. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.